everybody, and welcome to T-Box Talk, episode 19. My name is Andrew, and today I'm joined, as always, by Josh and Will, uh, bringing on a fourth special guest, the return of Phil the Thrill. Just when they think I'm out, they pull <laughs> me back in, baby. Pull me right back <laughs> in, baby. We- Phil's been wanting to come on. He's got some things he's got to get off his chest. We've been excited <laughs> to uh, have Phil back on the pod. So uh, should be a great one today. Uh, we <laughs> said goodbye to Nikki Shanks last weekend. Um, I'm going to take us right into the weekend roundup because on Friday, me, Josh, Will, and Nikki Shanks, you know, we took Nick out for uh, a day out in the city in Providence. A and, jaunt uh, around the town. Yeah, we had a, a jaunt g- around <laughs> the town. <laughs> Well, we were having a great day until um, we rode some electric scooters around and uh, Nikki Shanks took a digger in the middle of the street and he was bitching about it the whole rest of the day. But <laughs> it, was a whole, on blast, it was a whole mood changer for Shanks. <laughs> yeah, it was. You could tell he was he's sort of a different person after the fact, you know, he took a, I mean, he took a slammer, apparently. Because it sucked because Nick couldn't get uh, two of the scooter brands to work, so he had to run like four or five blocks to go find another one, and then he's missing for like 15 he's minutes. He's a goofball. I mean, <laughs> he, he is kind of a goofball, dude. How did he, f- like, honestly, like, we waited for him for like 45 minutes on the block while I was paying for my scooter. And, like, Will and I were we both We had to paying. shut him off. We had yeah. to turn him on and shut him off like yeah. four times. He, like, comes to see, you know, like, ascends out of the, out of the darkness and just ha- finally has a scooter, and then he comes back and he's all hurt and he's like he's like when well, i got golf next week or whatever <laughs> <laughs> sorry shanks yeah, man we Wendy. love you shanks love will's shanks. already going through uh withdrawals right now he has uh it was a depressing the rain didn't fucking help at all <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah no it didn't it's like tears gone cold i wonder it's like that song's playing yeah. in my head while shanks is hey, missing Stan, yeah. this is what i think about you. <laughs> <laughs> phil got it boy. phil picked up on it yeah yeah Oh, yeah. I um, think he was trying to claim workers' comp, you know, just like the last, <laughs> the last day. Yeah, yeah. he did say he was going to sue us, so. <laughs> he does know that my father was a workers' comp lawyer, too, yeah, so that's, yeah. that was bad he's information like, on my in. part. Yeah. He's like, I've been making breakfast for Will all these days. Yeah. Like, he's I'll playing get to his a, advantage. Get a free lawyer there. <laughs> get a free lawyer. <laughs> Phil, have you ever, uh, I would love to see you on one of those scooters. you ever mm-hmm. ride those around the city? I try not to be on things that, uh, you know, with two wheels, yeah. like, uh, I like to be grounded, but, uh, you know, I've had my fair share of scooter. Uh, you know, I, I had the, the original Razor. Oh, yeah. Mr. Old Reliable. And, yeah. and back when we used to work uh, together, yep. Kaluch. Yep. Kaluch was my intern at one point. We my called first him, ever intern. We called him little Kaluchi BB yeah. for Bitch Boy. Aww. <laughs> <laughs> <And>, yeah, <laughs> That's cute. Egg sandwiches every day. That's not the worst gig in the world, though. No. As no. far as, like, like he basically is just driving off on his own grabbing egg sandwiches. Like, yeah, it was perfect. I unless were, you were paying for them, right? No, 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 no. I never had oh. to pay for any of my and own he'd sandwiches. He'd get sandwiches for everyone, gave the yeah. janitors uh, massages. It was weird, you know? Yeah. So. <laughs> I did teach myself how to do the Rubik's Cube that summer, though. So it Productive was, it summer. Very yeah. productive summer. He, that is true. Uh, Colucci won this Rubik's Cube challenge. Like, everyone sucked, but Colucci had, like, one and a half sides done. Yeah. So they're like, ah, Colucci, what'd you win, by the way? You won the I whole team. I don't even, I think, oh, lunch. You, oh, that was a fire lunch, by the way. Yes. He, we, I won the whole team lunch because I had solved the most of the Rubik's Cube. So it's pretty and, sweet. And then after that, Colucci took it upon himself to learn how to do this a Rubik's Cube. And he got basically the whole team to get onto this trend. And everyone on our team had a Rubik's Cube. And one day my manager just freaked the F out. And he's like, he's like, why are you guys all playing with the Rubik's Cubes? You're supposed to be working. <laughs> <laughs> and Colucci's just like doing it, like panic doing it. That's I, so funny. I used to be able to do it in under two minutes. I, I can't do it anymore. I forgot all the algorithms, but that's besides the point. But uh, Josh and Phil, you had a good weekend. You guys went to a concert. You went to Sublime together? No, no, we did not go to Sublime. Dispatch, Kluge. Dis- you, you, you did say Sublime yeah. this morning. Oh, yeah. I made the mistake. Sorry, it was Dispatch. Maybe he had a Sublime time. Yeah, I had a Maybe Sublime time. Ooh. You're right. I did say Sublime. I, I didn't mean that, though. That's it was I was Dispatch. surprised when you said An you OAR. Really cool. I'm actually oh, not. I, again, I'm not. It's funny because I, we had this conversation over the weekend, too. Like, I went into the concert. I didn't. He let me know, like, right before the fact. Well, he told me a little while back, but he actually, like, the actual invite happened, like, the day before or the day of or something. And actually, the same day. Um, yes. so I like, d- didn't have the time to prepare, like to listen to all the so- songs and whatnot. But what's interesting is like, I had heard most of the songs, but I don't associate 
like songs with names of artists. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, you I, just like, like Dave, know it right away. Yeah, like Dave Matthews, I couldn't, t- I was saying to him, I was like, damn, I don't think I could tell you five Dave Matthews songs. Like, I pro- well, actually, I probably could tell you the name, but I don't think I could link the song with the name on five. I've been to 20 plus concerts of Dave Matthews. His songs, and yeah, his songs are like all, uh, you know, very similar to each other. Yeah. There's like Halloween, there's the Christmas song, Pig. Sweet, you know what I mean? It's like, how are you supposed to remember all these? Yeah, yeah. So, exactly. But you just know them when they come on. You just know them when you come on. So, yeah. like, when I was thinking, when I said Sublime, it's probably just because, like, the name Dispatch, and I keep getting it wrong. It was O O A A R R. It spells or. So, is it, I mean, is it? yeah, well, it, it was just weird because, like, you know, we're, we, Josh and I, we, we had a little adventure. Um, we went with two other people, but Josh and I we were kind of just like, let's, let's, Let's get some drinks. Yeah, and he showed me uh, his his uh, lady of of the, the event. Uh, was it Tara? Yeah, Tara. She's she's like I've gotten to know. I've gone there enough this summer that like I've gotten to know one woman there, and she's like forty eight or something like that. And she just she's serves me. She's a peach. She's a peach, but she serves me absolute diesel drinks. <laughs> oh, does she not care about the wristband either? Mm. Or, you, or did you? No, no, no. I I just got the wristband right from the start. But like the other, just like a. Like a week ago, I would just I hung out with her for a good period of time while I was waiting for my dad to do something, and I was just like like he was getting a drink or something, and I uh, yeah, I was just you I made just a friend. yeah, I made a friend. There was a connection there. I I felt it. Yeah, there was a vibe. I'm like I'm like yeah. should, I, should I leave? Like <laughs> at one point, I was like I'll just let you guys talk. <laughs> yeah, no, I don't know. She's she's I'm I'm very I I like Tara. I think she's a cool girl. <laughs> yeah, but she's she literally is. double my age, so it's like <laughs> it's one of those things where, like, you, you know, it, it's just we- a little weird, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, and I was saying to Phil how there was like I almost want to have like a Mrs. Robinson to Josh sort of relate. Do you ever see that movie, Mrs. No, Rob- I've not. You've never seen that with no. the Sheen? Is yeah. it Sheen? To you, Mrs. Robinson. I know the song. I know the Jesus song from. Uh, yeah. I know the song from American Pie. It's all okay. uh, American Pie. Yeah, that song's oh. American Pie. It's a Pie. popular it's movie. Oh, song. you're right. Stifler, yeah, yeah. The Stifler's mom. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah. Around that point. I yeah. Mean, so I, I asked, I would ask Phil some advice on what he thinks I should say to establish that type of Mrs. Robinson relationship, where uh, you know she is kind of. I'm like the young buck. She's mm-hmm. sort of the. St- like the cougar, the lion. Oh, the cougar. That's yeah. what it is. I like She's that. Cougar. Yeah. So. I, I just, I was like, you know, I, I was giving Josh uh, some, you know, Phil, Phil drink advice, you know, like I was, I was feeling good. And I was like, dude, just be like you, me, bottle of wine, my back seat. Let's get it going. <laughs> like, and Josh was just like, that is terrible. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I totally bad. I was like, let's like, give me the fuck out of here. And then I went to the Chick-fil-A tent and I broke down the business model of Chick-fil-A for like all the <laughs> employees. <laughs> we had a great concert. We, we enjoyed it. And then we went golfing yesterday at Kirk Bray, which it was surprising. I thought it'd be, it was actually, I don't think I've ever played it as dried out as it was. It yeah. was so dry, right. dude. Very dry. Did like, you shoot well? Uh, it was weird. I used the driver that's bro- that I gorilla glued, gorilla glued together. Yeah. And I couldn't miss a fairway. I couldn't slice it. I could, And I tried on that, on the par five, the one where it goes around the corner. I literally couldn't slice it, dude. You sent some bombs. Yesterday. I was just dead straight every time. It was wild. But Did you do like a team scramble or everyone kind of played their own yeah, ball? Yeah, so we, we played with, what, two two buddies from yeah. high school. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's always for me. It's like you know, it's it's always different because it's like you know, I don't know these two kids, so I'm like trying to get a vibe out. Like, how good are you? You know, and one kid, he was more of a player, and then the other kid was like, you know, I'm, I'm around a hundred, and might have been a little bit more. Maybe he's nervous, but yeah, Josh and I were definitely giving them a run for yeah, it. Like we yeah. we we were absolutely annihilating the. Yeah. Con- I mean, we I think there was points where. I mean, Phil and I went back to back birdies on one hole. And oh then, wow! Yeah, you know. I hit two birdies in a row. I I was I was getting a little birdie. It was it was a lot better than the last time. Uh, I felt I mean. bad the whole day. I was like, <laughs> I talk- missed that. So. Yeah, <laughs> I was talking about the fact that like I kind of felt bad because I feel like I feel like we unfortunately when the camera came out, his his nerves I think got to him because it is different yeah, to be playing yeah, in front yeah, of a ca- any camera like that. And once it got, jumps from like iPhone to like you have a crew of people there that like they're doing it for work Night and they've and got it. Yeah, it's totally different. So, but he, the same hole, he birdied 
You know the whole way he lost the mustard challenge? Yeah, 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 yeah. He fucking birdied it and he hit the ball. Like he hit a prime, like perfect dead shot, was like five feet from the pin, put it in for birdie. Had a boy feel the thrill. Yeah, I know uh, Will played some golf this weekend, played a great round at Connecticut National, correct? I did, yeah. I shot my probably best round of the year. Um, ended up shooting a 73. So I was I was very Damn. hyped and hyped on that leaving the course. Um a lot of uh, I spray in my driver. So contrary to what you guys were just talking about, I could not get the driver down yesterday, but everything else was rock solid. Um, and similar to Kirkbury too. I mean, K- Connecticut National is usually in great, great condition. Great. Oh, it was, it was a little burnt out too. Um, everything was rolling, you know, and, and that course is, is similar to almost Fox Run, where there's a lot of fescue and rolling hills and not a lot of flat lies. Um, so it was it was tough to to be aggressive with the pin and, and uh, your approach shots. So all in all, um, yeah, great day. Played with uh, some buddies that I hadn't seen in a while, and obviously my dad too. So yeah, it was a great day. Weather was awesome. Which it was uh, was it Dolph? <laughs> no, no, not golf with Dolph. Shout out Dolph. It was uh, my buddy Big Al came down. Big Al, Big Al. oh yeah, baby. I kids, want to kids like out. kids like five five, one hundred and fifty <laughs> pounds soaking wet. So I, the Big Al, he was a friend of a friend in college. So I actually never met Big Al until I was in college. He went to a different college, obviously. But I play with Chandler too. Who oh, you there guys, you go. Yeah, you guys yeah. Know. Big Al's an love Chandler. Moron, I guess. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I guess so. No, wait, yeah. Don't you have a friend that's like seven feet tall or something? Um, Tiny Tim. Right. <laughs> Tiny Tim, yeah. I have a friend who's six ten. Six ten. That's what it was. Yeah. Yeah. No, he's. A, I have. I don't play golf with him. Oh, six ten. Wow. That's that's, that's big that's boy. Does he, does he play golf at all? No, I think he just has to concentrate on walking and not hitting his head on shit. <laughs> yeah. All right. That makes sense. Uh, I will say one more thing about our little trip to Providence. Josh was telling us all all day in Providence that we have to try this vegan ice cream. We have to try this vegan ice cream, and so we finally tried it. And it was fucking unbelievable. Probably the best ice cream I think I've ever had. Really? Yeah. I was really <laughs> thinking about it the whole rest of the day. I was like, I'm glad wanna... you put the thought into it, dude. I was like, I want to go back really bad. <laughs> yeah, dude. Because I felt totally. Handshake. I felt totally Appreciate fine. that. I felt totally fine. Because I, whenever I eat ice cream, for some reason, I get like really sick. So like. It's not some reason. It, the reason <laughs> is that it's fucking heavy cream and we're not meant to. Like, even if you can digest it, it's the amount, the pure amount of fat and calories in a fucking slug of ice cream is enough to yeah. take you out. Now, yeah, like I have questions over here. Like. Better taste, less like in the cow. I taste, I tasted like, the nut milk. I I tasted it a little. Yours bit. Yours wasn't as well, good. Well, I also got a slushy like a three year old, and then got brain freeze. So yeah. <laughs> I don't <laughs> think that helped with my vegan ice cream experience. But a lot of sugar. You had a lot of sour sugar taste before you went to the ice cream, which I do think exactly. has an impact. But I will say. Yours, like the flavor, you got what, vanilla? I got vanilla soft serve with these like vegan Oreo crumbles and it was yeah. unbelievable. That's tried and true, Will. Honestly, they, I do feel like I kind of tasted on some of them a little bit of oat, which I, I didn't like that much. The tried and true vanilla soft with serve. like, yeah, like with like, if you do get like, uh, like It doesn't Oreo. even need to be soft serve. It doesn't even need to be soft serve, but I love soft serve ice yeah. cream and I eat it a lot. And every time I get really sick, and this time I didn't get sick at all, so I was pumped. It's electric, about, right? And we on, had pizza and shit that day, yo, too. Oh, yeah. I had a I'm still on Will saying, you know, he tasted the nut milk. That <laughs> <laughs> tasted <laughs> like... <laughs> actually, yeah, that's kind of like... It. That's gross, Is that actually. called something else? I, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. It'll, it'll come to me. <laughs> nut milk. <laughs> oat milk, I think, is the probably the it best. It tasted like I got a little hint of almond in there. Yeah. So it could have been almond milk. Who knows? I like. I actually like coconut vegan ice cream, but like coconut milk better because I like coconut. But if you don't like coconut, then you'd want this one because this one doesn't really... The the vanilla, again, well, it... The, it, it was so still good. I, yeah, I mean, I'm not. I feel like shit though. Anyway. I needed to get. I should have gotten you that. Well, we kind of panicked because we we, were, we got like we wanted like six kitty sizes, and the lady's like, "What are you doing? Like, <laughs> there's a line. Yeah, <laughs> hurry up." So it was like panic, and then they were trying to combine them all into one bowl, and then we lost one. We didn't get the cookies and cream, and then we got the <laughs> cookies and cream. So it was. Uh, <laughs> Excuse me, miss. Uh, on my receipt, it says I got this. Uh, ice yeah. cream anxiety was in full effect. Yeah. It was. Will actually had to take a step out of the main spotlight because I think he was having like a mini PA over the kitty <laughs> cup situation. <laughs> it's, it's too many flavors, too many bowls. Yeah. Oh, it was just it was a great time. Though. Just regular ice cream. What's like a go to regular ice cream for you guys? Like, uh, so I'm, I stick with, to my guns. It, if. 
I have access to soft serve, I will get soft serve vanilla with M and M's every time. No I, questions I, asked. I was gonna say you would be something like kind of a little basic. Yeah, oh, he's yeah. plain, plain you're, Jane. You're vanilla. Yeah, yeah, I like plain vanilla soft serve with chocolate wow. sprinkles. I actually am like a total opposite. I'm Ben and Jerry's. Um, I was going with Ben and Jerry's too. I'm curious your flavor. So you want to say at the same time on on three? Yeah. Three, two, one. Chunky fish food. monkey. Oh, Chunky Monkey's good though, dude. Yes. So, so also, there's uh, for some reason all like the late night guys have their own ice cream, and it's kind of weird. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, so there's a Jimmy Fallon, but uh, what's the other guy? Seth. Seth Myers. No, yeah, but it's not him. What's the third guy? Uh, Colbert. S- Stephen Colbert. So yeah, okay. So his is really good. It's like a vanilla caramel with like something else in. But what I do is I throw Cape Cod potato chips in it, and it's fire. The this caramel. is not the first time I've heard about this. Well, it's kind of French fry in a milkshake theory. It's like salt and sweet. That's the common. Yeah, it's like if you dip your French fries in the milkshake. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. That's been around if for you years. haven't done it, do it. Because the caramel with the salt and the like the cold of the ice cream, it just works. Interesting. Cape Cod chips, not Cape Cod, not uh, Lay's. Yeah, yeah. Cape okay. Cod. All right. And I'd not the reduced kind. Out. The real cake. You got to go all the way. If You're I'm at like 6,000. I'm not going 40% yeah. less. 6,000 calories later, you know? Yeah. If but I have to have hard ice cream, though, like no soft serve access, I'm getting Oreo or I'm getting cotton candy ice cream. Cotton, cotton candy is really good. Cotton candy. Cotton candy. I love just cotton so, candy. Hey, just for the record. I got Godly. sick from cotton candy ice cream. Really? Like, shout out yeah. Tropic Frost in South <laughs> Kingston, <laughs> Island. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> wow, all right. We won't be asking them for a yeah. sponsorship. <laughs> but, yeah. but, hey, you know what I will tell you is that Ben & Jerry's also, the flavor that I like, which is fish food, it, it comes in a non-dairy all right, so, and it to literally, that. that one doesn't taste like oat milk or anything. Like it doesn't, it tastes identical to ice cream. And I don't even know if it's what, healthy do you or know not, what, but it doesn't. What, what are the flavors in fish food? Because everybody oh, always talks Marshmallow. About salmon. It's marshmallow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's Super marshmallow tuna. with chocolate <laughs> fishies in it. Like chocolate caramel yeah, fishies yeah, yeah, yeah. with a layer also of uh, caramel fudge. And what's the base though? I don't even know. It's chocolate. Just, I, I got to get it. Yeah, I you get just got to try it. It's I'll, good. I'll, I'll I, go that to used to be like one of my faves. Too. Yeah. My That's sister good. turned me it's on. It's electric. Food. Yeah. But anyways, Josh shows this awesome vegan ice cream place. And I, I, I really, I had high expectations because I do trust Josh's food opinion, but it blew my expectations away. It was very good. Great. Uh, I also had a wedding this weekend, but. Oh, let's hear it. It was a family wedding, so I kind of well, I had got not gonna lie, bit. I got absolutely bombed, but like <laughs> I was, but it was a good time. But I'm gonna save some of stuff for later because oh, okay, well. my grandma's crazy, and I'll just lead with that. And, Before and we uh, wrap up on weekend roundup, I shared some some pretty big news in the Davis household. I uh, I tried fish and chips for the first time on oh, Saturday. Okay, and this. <laughs> But fucking listen, all right? Listen. Yeah. Will, you just set that up in such a way that I thought you were about to say something it's a way bit, different. It's a big deal for me. Or like, <laughs> like, kids coming. No, I, yeah, I, yeah, I, 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 was thinking, I was thinking, like, is he about to fucking tell me he's got kids coming or something yeah, like yeah. that? I was like, oh, God. No, fuck them kids. But <laughs> no, I, uh, I haven't. You guys know I went to Peru in college, right? Yeah. I told you guys about that. Well, we literally ate fish P- for Purdue? breakfast. P- Peru. Oh, Peru. Yeah, oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So we ate fish for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. We were living on the Amazon. I got so sick of fish after the two weeks that I just vowed I would never eat fish again in my entire life. Fair enough. And so we were at Jim's Dock in uh, East Matunic, Rhode Island, after the beach on Saturday. And I figured, hey, if I'm going to try it, this is the place to do it. And so, lo and behold, I added a new food group back into my diet. So So you liked it? I did, yeah. The first bite was a little fishy because I hadn't had it in so long. (laughs) Obviously, it's fucking fish. So funny. So funny. (laughs) But, yeah, I liked it. I actually, I scarfed it down. I had never had tartar sauce before either. So, Dude, new realm. Yeah, it was like I was freaking 12 again and trying all new foods. That just sounds like SpongeBob. When people say tartar sauce. Sauce. I, I can't. I don't even think about. That. I also think a sponge. I just think sauce. Like, throw a Krabby yeah. Patty. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that tartar sauce. Weedle, weedle. <laughs> I have three dollars. <laughs> <laughs> three dollars. I had. I, you know, it's funny. I had my first ever hot lobster roll this uh, this weekend. It was pretty good. I st- I'm I am yet to try lobster, but we'll f- we'll we'll get there. I, I have Baby a fish steps. sandwich every Friday. Really? It's From Phil's what? fish sandwich Friday. Uh, I go to Cumberland House Pizza. Shout out <laughs> Chops. <laughs> Shout out Chops. Uh, that's going to wrap up the weekend roundup. Uh, great stuff all around. Uh, some golf news. Uh, some stuff going on that I wanted to discuss on the pod. Um, 
Did anybody see the Rory McIlroy and the remote control ball? Did see that at the that. tournament? No. Uh, I'll pass. I'll pass the phone around. It's so funny. So Rory McIlroy, some guy from the crowd, was um, he was he had a remote control golf ball and he threw it out onto the green and then he was controlling it from his phone and he was like fucking with Rory and stuff in the middle of the tournament. He shouted like, "Hey Rory, this is how you make a hole in one." And then was like trying to put the ball in the, the hole, hole with the remote control, and Rory kept blocking it with his putter, and he kept doing it. He yeah. kept fucking trying to get it in the hole, and Rory's visibly pissed off. Yeah, this is this is wild. During this is big, this is, was it the BMW. Yeah, yeah. The BMW yeah. Championship, right? And I'm surprised that he even got like. Oh, the guy's getting oh. kicked out. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, he and got kicked out. Rory I mean, picked up the ball. He picked he up the remote control in, ball and threw it in the pond. Threw it in the pond. I got to be honest. He's being a hardo about that. I think that that was such a funny thing to do. Like, I feel like seeing a ball going. Oh, he should have just let it go I in think, the hole. I think if it was a practice round, he probably would have thought it was funny. But that's true. I guess I, I cannot even put myself. I mean, the in gonads this. on that guy, right? Like, <laughs> yeah, dude. I've been. Uh, that's a lot. There's a lot of people out there that takes a public. Like they've been very public at golf tournaments, and it's so awkward. Like if you're if you're at like a football game where there's a stadium of people who are really loud to cover yeah. up your actions, you know what I mean? It, like stuff washes over quickly. But like I was watching that video, of the dude who was chirping uh, Phil Mickelson about the Saudi prince and like he, he everything he was he was gonna win for the Saudi prince, and he like screamed it out before Phil took his swing. Yeah. And it was dead silent. And like everybody in the crowd and the whole entire crowd was looking at this one guy who's saying that. I, th- I think it's like a double-edged sword because these people just want their shining moment because they know the camera's on them, right? They know the camera's on the player. They know that it's dead silent. Whatever they say is going to get picked up. But like my whole thing is like, aren't you just going to get kicked out and like banned from future events for doing that? Absolutely. Like, I mean, 100%. yeah. Like this guy just got banned from probably all PGA tour events now for doing the remote. He's going to the live, live tour now. Yeah. <laughs> he thought he was at the live tour. <laughs> yeah. the, the guy in his remote ball just signed with live actually. <laughs> just signed with live. <laughs> That's it always like dry. It always like, I always wonder like when people like not streak. Cause I know if you streak on the field, you get arrested for like public indecency, but like, just to jump on the field, like at a baseball game or a football game, and just run till you get tackled, and yeah, I don't think you get like necessarily arrested for that. I think. Oh you just, yeah, you, if you, oh yeah. You, if you're clothed. Oh, if you're clothed. I don't. I don't want to digress from the the golf thing, but I just have a funny fact because you guys are talking about taking your clothes off. Um, <laughs> Easy boy in Vermont. <laughs> in Vermont, boy. if you leave your house completely unclothed and you walk out into public naked, you won't get arrested. But if you take your clothes off in public, you will get arrested. So it's about where oh, you, you are. Because you just have to be a nudist, right? Well, yeah, like you just like, you just can't take your clothes off in public. You just have to walk out your front door nude. Some Come on. Lust, so so yeah, not, sorry, but is that I, serious though? That's serious. Because so people, I would be fucking walking around Burlington during college and just see naked people. No, all the you time. did not. Yes. What? <laughs> yes. Wait, really? How yes. have you never brought this up? This is crazy. Yeah, that's like one of the I'm most... I'm surprised I didn't bring it up when we were in Vermont. Yeah. But, you know, yeah. Like 2020. I think it's because I'm on the show today. Yeah, you know, Phil's like, bringing I'm just that feeling energy. spicy, you know? Dude, I, I can't believe that, though. Like, that's a very real thing, that there's like a nudist culture there, I guess. I guess, but I, I mean, it's just the law. I mean, so, you know, you could walk out your front door in Vermont and, you know, wag it around and then you're fine. That's but wild. if you walk into a public place and take your clothes off. It's what about like a, like a children's playground like that? Well, that, that there's probably some laws in place that would prevent I, oh, something I would like hope that. So. I, would, <laughs> I, I mean, would hope so. If you're getting naked, I probably wouldn't live next to a playground, you know, like, but yeah, that's sorry. a good point. That's a good point. Sorry, <laughs> you have children. I, I interrupt your, your no, streaking. This is, the most, Maybe naked this is too. like the most interesting <laughs> fact, dude. That's crazy. But like, but like my whole point is just like, why do people do that? Like the electric golf ball, the shouting out like bad things on like at quiet events or like running onto a baseball football. Like you get banned for life. Like you're done. It's also fun, Kaluchi. I would, yeah, I would argue. <laughs> yeah, but I wouldn't want to give up going for the rest of my life. That would suck. Oh, you find another event. Yeah. There's so many out there. Tennis. Yeah. Tennis is actually electric. If you go to a big tennis match down I've in Newport, never done. they dude, they have one of the biggest tournaments of the year. Um, Every year in uh, in Newport was it's, the Hall of Fame. Uh, yeah, game? dude, it's a. Uh, I don't know. Is it big though? No, it's it's big. There's they. I was there. I wasn't there for the tournament, but point is, is like you go down there and it's like beautiful. You buy the beach and then you go watch a very competitive match and it gets super intense. It's a great sport. It's a yeah. long sport though, right? I think it, it is can, a little bit. Some, some, some would say that like, about golf too, though, right? Oh, true, yeah, true. Yeah. But if I'm not into it, like I'm I'm out. Like I, I like golf. Like I could. 
Yeah. I, I'm going to be live gambling on whoever's, you know, up and like, yeah. <laughs> I find a way to make it fun. Yeah. I prefer playing golf more than I like watching. Yeah. hundred percent. I, I rarely watch golf on the television unless it's like the majors. Yeah. I think at this point I prefer to watch football than I would rather play football. You know what I'm saying? Like oh, yeah. I don't, yeah. I don't like playing, like, with your friends or something? Yeah, like, I like that, to me, has just lost its, like, I, I, th- I look at something like that, and I'm like. I'm going to get hurt. Yeah, mm-hmm. I mean, it's just going to be, like, what, how many muscles am I pulling, how many tendons am I tearing, and how long is my recovery after this match now? Yeah. yeah. I mean, I pulled my calf muscle <laughs> yesterday playing <laughs> golf. <laughs> I, was, I was dancing after a birdie on, like, a hill. I, I didn't feel it then, but, like, today I woke up, I'm like, ah. Walking like an old man. Like, <laughs> uh, that's pretty good. Um, Any other golf news, Kaluch? Yeah, I got a couple more things. Uh, Tiger Woods back on the cover of PGA Video Games. Yes. He's going to yes. grace the cover of PGA Tour 2K23. He hasn't been on for a while. I think Rory was the last guy to get on nope, it. Justin he was Thomas on. was. Oh, JT? I'm a, I am have the game. So. Oh, <laughs> oh, it was 2021 was Rory yeah, then. Yep. Yeah. yeah, that was my uh, COVID splurge. And I was just playing. A lot of kids play that game from Canada. I have like four friends. One guy was like a like a DJ up in Canada and he, he was like he's like you down mate to play or whatever like they say <laughs> down there. mate. Yeah, <laughs> like yeah, like to like play around. Yeah. yeah. But like just for some reason, a bunch of uh I don't know, Canadians love that game. So you made friends online playing playing the PGA game. tour. Is this yeah. is it Xbox One or what do you play? Yeah, on? Xbox One. Yeah. But like the cool thing about that when COVID, you know, in the winter uh, some some guy from Rhode Island, um, I think he's a member at Kirkbray. Uh, he would like download somehow on Google Maps courses around here, so you can play like Kirkbray Country Club. You can play Crystal Lake. Like the courses are in the game, and you can play them. Yeah, it's it's, yeah. it's 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 custom made courses, and he probably downloaded the Google images and, and like did them perfectly. And the kid kid did an amazing job. I mean. Unreal job. Stop it, really? I hundred percent. And I, I would play, play the that. yeah. It, it's it's it's. A lot I mean, I play I that game. I played nonstop for like years straight. Yeah, we had a lot like of fun. With twenty that first from twenty nineteen to twenty twenty two. I played each version of that game. Yeah, it's a really good game. But yeah, Tiger's back on the cover. Do you think they're gonna have all the live players in the game or no? No, no. I heard I heard uh, they're gonna have some female players. I think Lexi Thompson's gonna be on. Um, I think Colin uh, Morikawa. Uh, Will, the other Will, not you, Will. <laughs> Will's <laughs> going to be in the game, I believe. That's and, awesome. And uh, J- Justin Thomas. That's Some so others, gnarly. too. But oh, my those God. Those big names. And then uh, the other thing I had was uh, details started to emerge from the golf meeting with the PJ Tour players. So last week they had this big uh, meeting before the BMW Championship where they were like, okay, this is what's going on. we got to address all this shit. Tiger Woods came. Everybody was making a big deal about it, how Tiger came to the golf meeting. Um, and now the things that they are going to implement in the near future, they're going to have some no cut events with a lot bigger purses, but only a little bit of players get into them. Like I think it's like 61 players or something. And then they're looking to make the tour no longer a non-for-profit so that that means that they'll be paying taxes and then they can raise a lot more money, like from outside investments to create these massive purses to compete with the live players and, like, the funny part of all that is that, like, why did it take this long to do th- these things, you know? They're just kind of, like, they're, like, under the gun now from the live tour. So now they're doing all these things that they probably should have been doing years ago. And it wouldn't have caused all these players to jump ship. Well, that's always, like, that's the old adage that, it's not an adage, but that's the old situation when, like, they create a law. And then they overturn the law. Like, marijuana is a great one. They were, like, it was, like... 80% of inmates in police jails were there from for fucking marijuana at one point. Or some crazy number. I don't know what it was. And then they come out of nowhere, and, like, these people have lost, like, 20 years of their life, right? Yeah. Like, it's a jail system for selling weed. And now it's made legal everywhere, and it's like, are they to be paid back? Like, are they to be... So that you get all this, you get... it's The, the lines become so fucking distorted from that type of situation, you know? Yeah, because if they had just done this stuff earlier, not all those players would have jumped ship and gone to the live. Yeah, so I mean, the open market in anything, in business as well, like, it's better better for the consumer, but in this case, like, the players now, it's better for them because it's, it, it, it forces them to change. I mean, I don't even think there would be a live tour if they were paying 
what you, how you just def- like what I've been seeing in the news and what you just defined is like that. From what I know, the whole entire reason that they stepped against the PGA Tour is because you got to look at the players involved, right? Like who's who's Greg Norman is the king and commander on behalf of the Saudis creating this league, right? His, he already had a lawsuit trying to create his own league yep. many years prior. And also from a golfer's perspective, he's convinced big names like Phil Mickelson, who also have quarrels with the PGA Tour. And so now it's like, it was a mutiny. It's a full mutiny. That's all this really boils down, right? I mean, it's like people are sick of the PGA Tour. It's not that they need multiple leagues. It's be, they just think that the PGA Tour, clearly there's something wrong with the way that they are to the players. Yeah, because now they're changing it. Yeah, and that's the same shit it. we were saying. Well, everyone's pretty much been saying from the beginning with the LIV Tour was that, and it's it comes out directly what Phil said. Like, they're just, like, LIV Tour is applying pressure to the PGA. Yeah. Like, the, at the end of the day, that's what they're doing. Yeah. And the PGA Tour has responded with changes already, and that's yeah. what From we anti- f- that's what we fucking anticipated. Yeah. I mean, what else are they going to do? They just can. They're just going. Players are just going to continue to drop out. Imagine right now if you had three more players from the PGA Tour leave: Rory McIlroy, Justin Thomas, and who's one other huge Mark name? Howard. Ah, Mark Howe's not. No, oh, he's he's pretty big. I mean, he is pretty big, but I, I, he wouldn't be like Scotty, Scotty Scheffler. Oh, funny, he's world number one. We're running yeah. out of the names that have the huge brand. Oh Ta- yeah, like I'll use Tiger Woods even. Like if those three players went over to the live tour right now, who would be the main tour? Who would you go to? Like who would really be the place that you you would go to watch? The crickets. You would yeah. You literally would be going to the PGA Tour for all new names, and then all the biggest names in golf would be on the live tour. Yeah. Because honestly, think about that. That mean that would mean that you would have Justin Thomas, Dustin Johnson. You would have Phil Mickelson, Tiger Woods, um, Rory, Rory McIlroy. Uh, Bryson DeChambeau, Brooks Kepka. Am I missing any? Bubba. 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 Bubba Holy yeah. shit, Bubba. Ricky Fowler. Cam Smith is about to go. Cam Smith. Every single oh, one man. of the major players. If I just took out those three players and put them on a live tour. So my point is basically being they need to start sucking sucking the old pee-pee of uh, Rory <laughs> McIlroy. <and players. laughs> so otherwise, they're fucked. I did see also that, I don't know if you saw that, Kaluchi, but Greg Norman basically denied the fact that they, that's what they offered, Tiger. Well, he, he said that he did, they didn't offer him the 800 mil? Yeah, yeah. Well, it was along the lines of, like, we never offered him, like, that much money. And they definitely did. They, they, yeah, 100% they did, yeah. What's well, the most? What's the biggest contract that they've awarded already? Probably. D, no, Phil. D, is it Phil or DJ? It's Phil or DJ. I know DJ is, like, 160, 170 yeah, or something. Yeah, I don't, I don't believe that they – I don't believe that they mm. offered 800 million. That sounds – You don't com- believe that? Dude, 800 million, he's he is he's going to be done. He's, he's, he might be done right now. He is not, like, in good shape, man. That dude is – I love the man. I hope he wins another major. But he's – Dude, he's in fucking rough shape, man. He's what is he? How old is he now? Like fifty, fifty five? Got to be in his forties. Like is he still forties? Yeah. Mid to yeah, late forties. That's kind of crazy. How I, old is Tom Brady? Forty five. <laughs> yeah, no, they're they're similar. <laughs> they're similar in age. And Brady's in full contact. I actually think Tiger's forty six. Tiger's forty six. Okay. But Holy also, the yeah. Tiger had ma- like multiple back surgeries and legs. Yeah, I mean, and they, they were going to amputate his leg. Yeah, yeah, no, that was, that that car accident. I think. So done, e- yeah, even though he's forty six, his body's probably aged a lot more than yeah. that. You no, know, it's crazy Brady too. Also towards ACL. We learned this, Phil. Uh, well, I Nick and I knew about it, but we were sitting at Pizza Marvin in Providence having a drink after his fall. <laughs> and and uh, there was a Hunnis, Hun, what is it, Genesis? Yeah, the Genesis yeah. GV80 or whatever yeah, yeah. Uh, had a big recall. This car, the same car, I believe, that Tiger, Tiger was driving, yeah. and the, the recall was at the steering wheel locks up over 40 miles an hour. Ah. How's that even a thing? What does that even mean? Well, like, it's all these fucking new car brands come yeah. out. It's like the, the Ford Bronco. They, they, they brought the Bronco back, and then, yeah, you buy it, but it comes with 100 recalls right out of Wait, the bag. really? Yeah, the br- the new Broncos are like the worst cars in the entire world. I was really? just saying to Phil yeah. the other day at yeah. the concert that it looks so se- it looks sexy. Yeah, it might work like shit, but it looks so good. But dude. it's a problem when you come out with a brand new car. Oh yeah, and you're gonna have problems with it. And the Genesis brand from Hyundai is a is like their luxury brand, so it's still a new line of cars, only a couple years old. So I think it's because all the cars now they're slowly like. S- Actually, not slowly. They are all running off computers now. So yeah, they're like, very rapidly changing. If they don't, if they fuck up a little thing in the computer, 
the little computer chip, like you fuck the whole car. That's definitely a brand. I, I would say that's a that's a product in American and probably global culture that you you really gun for brand uh for like brand respect almost, you oh, know. Absolutely. Like, dude, I've heard too many situations where cars are just like they literally are the cause of like so many deaths. And like uh, where the car is at fault, uh, at fault, and it's, you know, like Tesla, for instance. I think <laughs> I'm just having deja vu. Yeah, yesterday. yeah, oh yeah. We <laughs> talked about this yesterday. It's like test. I mean, because Tesla is doing that, where they're now, they okay. Actually, crazy thing that Phil and I, we learned, but we're not we're not sure on if it's accurate or not. Yeah, my buddy was telling me yesterday that a standard Model S Tesla is the same car the same engine propulsion motor system as a Tesla Plaid. And in order to unlock the Tesla Plaid features, it's merely a software upgrade. Wow. It could be true. I mean, that sounds right. It's not wild though. Like to get the, his quote was that basically it's the same car. I do think they put a different frame in it, but you can buy the Plaid without the Plaid and it's, Whatever model car that is, yeah, I think. I, I, don't, I don't remember, but, but it's, it's insane. It's everything's becoming like service based. Yeah. Everyone wants that subscription. He was yeah. also telling us the same kid where it's like uh, all the s- seats in those cars, they have the heated uh, seat option where you can upgrade. So like once winter comes for fifteen ninety nine. Yeah, you can get heated seats. BMW does that <laughs> yeah, too. BMW, that, yeah, that's, that's what they were saying. Yeah, BMW, yeah, BMW yeah. does oh, it. It's like sixteen dollars like a month. Yeah, yeah, you can pay for Ridiculous. heated seats. But yeah. then you can just cancel it. I, I, yeah, I, I don't know what well, the I, contract I, stipulates, but the way that they were stri- the way that they were saying it wasn't that it was a monthly subscription. They were saying that you have the option to pay a premium, like two years into your BMW usage, if you want to unlock the heated seats, <laughs> you pay it then, and which actually kind of makes sense, right? Though, like it's not that big a deal because it is an extra expense. But so their their claim is that basically it's cheaper for them to just make the same car instead of customizing every single car with all the extra labor. So they just make one car. And then if you really, if you want the heated seats, you have always have the option to upgrade at any point, but it comes with it with the car. I actually don't hate that. No, I don't either. That's right. Fine. I mean, it's kind of yeah, nice. When you get a, when you go and buy a car off a lot, you can buy the packages right now. It's the same thing things, to you, but, uh, and then you just have to wait and they have to put, yeah, it I mean, it's them. the same thing to you. You yeah. get, you either get it at the, when you buy a car or you don't. And now you can do it m- like months later. If it's fucking cold, and my ass needs a little bit toasty. Then I, <laughs> I can, can upgrade. I can't fucking use sea heaters. Yeah. I get sweats. The, yeah. I can't. Fast. Yeah. Yeah, I can't even use them in the too. winter. I, you know, speaking of recalls, I freaking I was driving my my old car. It was like a uh, 2008 BMW SUV, and apparently the airbags didn't work. And I was driving around with a recall on my car for like years, and then I finally got got an inspector one time. I'm like, you should have gotten this recalled a long time ago. And I think like, you're a safe driver. Well, there's a window. <laughs> there's a window for it. Like if you don't bring the car in within like one to two years or some shit, they give you an end date. And then they won't fix it. You like you have to pay out of pocket to fix it. So. Yeah, it's a goddamn disaster when it did, when it sprung up on me like that. But uh, that's gonna wrap it up for golf news, unless anyone else got anything. Uh, yeah. Colin, yeah. But uh, nope, nope, nope. Cool. It's always you know the live stuff. It's gonna uh, we started this podcast at the right time because like we always have something juicy to talk about with golf because uh, there's always we drama did. going on. I um, also think that by the way that in the future we should be bringing a little bit of alternative golf. Uh, not so much news, but I like the idea, and I'm curious what other people think about this. Is like golf is a very changing sport, and as everybody here knows, I've been living in the meta for the last couple months. Yeah. So, oh, or, boy. actually, not a couple months, maybe like a month. But golf in the meta has become almost as much. I pl- I'm playing almost as much golf in the meta as I am in real life. In fact, I'm probably playing more. Like, ho- like number of holes played. I mean, I've been getting foursome after foursome of friends. New people are getting the meta, and it's becoming a whole other golf universe. And it's, it's fun. It's fun. It's fun. really fucking fun. And I meta I, man I, Macari over there. I, I'm just saying that there <laughs> that amongst like top golf news, and there's so many other facets of golf. The game, the video game, golf. Like, um, there's just so many more avenues to explore. I think so. Golf news and more. I, I think you know if the graphics are like like almost like the uh, PGA game that we just talked about a little while. I'm in. I'm in. No, see, it, it can never be like that. And I wouldn't want it to be like that on the then. meta I'm just out. because <laughs> because I kind of like it. Because, like, it looks beautiful when you play meta golf uh, on the Oculus. But, like, it's, like, more of a game. It's, like, a, it's almost, like, a little cartoony. If it was, like, real HD graphics with, like, 
pictures and stuff, the, first of all, the game size would be like 30 gigs, 40 gigs. So it would never like, it would take up so much storage on your phone. And the, the VR headsets are not powerful enough to stand on their own and run something like that. If you plugged it into a computer, I guess that'd be different. But then you have to plug into a computer. They, they will be though. They uh, they will be though. Yeah, they I'm will a be there. Complete novice, actually. so I just went all the over immersion level <laughs> of of it is uh, is intense. Basically, it's just more. There's more graphics means more pixels means more data. Okay. Okay. So I mean, I'm I think it, th- it's very immersive. Is the is the point? But I disagree in the sense that like I would. I hope that one day it's like. It's you like want, Xbox you, One graphics, and I'm just like crazy. on. That would be pretty cool, yeah. That was meta talk today on the podcast, but I do want to do a quick uh, <laughs> what are we watching because last night Ooh, yeah, was baby. the premiere of Game of Thrones, House of the Dragon, and uh, I'm all the way back into Game of Thrones. I've said on this podcast before that I, would, I wasn't going to watch it. I was like, fuck <laughs> that. I'm like, screw them. Dun, but dun, like, dun, of dun, course dun, I was going to watch it. What are you, crazy? And it was fucking awesome, yeah, and I loved it. You were it. never not going to watch that shit. I watched, I, mean. I took like a couple <laughs> hours over the weekend and I was just watching YouTube highlights of my favorite moments from Game of Thrones like I did a few weeks ago too. <laughs> but like, but now is the day before I had to do it and I was so sick. Yeah, I, I, I might have binged because uh, like, you know, the last two weeks uh, HBO had all the Game of Thrones like playing yeah. nonstop. So I was just, you know, working, watching and just like reliving like, oh, I remember when I first watched this and it just... Brought me back, man. And then last night, no spoilers, but oh, it started bad, it out with dude. a bang. Yeah, don't spoil it. I have yet to watch. Started it out with a bang. I, I, mean. I, I mean, I got to be honest with you. Like, I'm. So, I definitely think there was some energy there. And wh- this has nothing to do with the show. Like, I'm not going to ruin any spoilers, but I will say, I was just saying this. Like, I, I don't know how they're. I just don't know how they're going to top. You get me into a state where I think it's like it's as good a show or even amounting to the same as White Walkers. You know, like True. that the whole narrative of Game of Thrones was always the winter is coming. Right. And then right. The, it, that's how they paralleled storylines in different places amounting to this like um, c- oncoming, you know, when shitstorm that was about to hit. But I just, I don't know. You know, it's, it's also so grotesque. I don't remember it being as grotesque as it was last night. Like, there was some Game of Thrones scenes that were like over the top, like oh that was fucked up, like when uh when the Viper gets his eyes like crushed in by the mountain. Oh yeah, like that was, that was like intense, intense. But last night for the pilot episode, I was like, holy shit, like this yeah. is, they're back, like they're. Like, I kind of get that feeling though that they're like. You think they intentionally went over the top? I I, a I bit? think their whole goal, I think, especially because what they, I can't ruin it for Will and anybody watching, but basically like. I don't know. They, I think that they're replacing a little bit of that story emphasis with shock and awe. Yeah. Like, because yes. we, we're not in on the story right now because it's taking place in almost an irrelevant period of time because we already know what happens in the future, they are now replacing it with, like, grotesque brutality. And it's very, it and, is shock and, and, and awe. And my thing, too, is, like, it's, it's in the past, obviously, but, and then, like, we always heard about stories throughout Game of Thrones, but how much of what happened is actual, like, truth, you yeah. know? Well, Because things book, change over time. Like, yeah, right. I mean, the book was written. There, There is a book that this is all based That's off true. of. That's true. So okay, they but do I'm have just source saying, material. I'm just saying, like, uh, the, just from the stories in Game of Thrones, like, what was the stories that they're sharing in the, in the show, was that true? You know what I mean? Because history is only told by the victors, right? So it's like... Oh, so we're going to get this. I guess we'll have to wait and see. I'm just just curious. I'm just, uh, things I'm hopeful for this show. I don't know. I just, I hope, I think there is a world that the White Walkers can make an appearance because like, if you remember like in the start of Game of Thrones, the White Walkers are already a thing. Like they have a whole army pretty much. Like (laughs) maybe we'll get some type of like backstory and stuff like that. I hope so. I mean, they could introduce a whole new foe. They right. could come in with, you know... And that's why the show is so great. Cause yeah, you, like, the dragons could team up, and then it becomes a war against the dragons, and that's why there was none yeah. in Game of Thrones originally. Well, that's the, that's the answer we're going to get. Uh, the, the thing is, what kind of sucks is, like, with a show like this, is you already know the ending. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know in the beginning of Game of Thrones that there are no more dragons. Right. The Targaryens are dead, all of them, so, like, except Daenerys. So, like, where, like... How we get there is going to be very interesting and fun, and we'll see. I just I a little bit frustrating though, uh, for me that you personally. already know the ending. Yeah, like I, I feel, I feel like uh, they're doing the Star Wars though. You know what I mean? Like they're going back. 
That's that's true. That is exactly what they're doing. But I just find it more frustrating with Game of Thrones because I've always felt like like the for, for instance, it took me like five times to watch Game of Thrones the first two episodes because they were they just moved slow. It's a lot of talking, a right. lot of dialogue, mm-hmm. right. and I I don't do that well with that. And my I guess my one thing with that was I knew that there was something to hold out for. Like I knew it was elevating constantly. So like if I just got through those first couple seasons of story and plot. I would make it there to the finish line. But with this, because we already so there's so much speculation, you constantly are sitting there trying to like parallel it with Game of Thrones and it almost makes it not as enjoyable for me to watch. But that's a personal feeling. Yeah, yeah but it was really I, I really enjoyed it. I'm excited for the rest of it to come out. We'll watch immediately. Uh, anyone else watch anything recently that they want to talk about? Um, I actually have uh, the last episode of Better Call Saul tonight. I, I was waiting for my brother. He was <coughs> traveling, so... I, I have haven't that. seen a single episode of Better Call Saul. And you've seen Breaking Bad? Yeah, all of it. I, I think I like Saul better. I'm hearing that. I'm hearing That's that. Just crazy. because I, I'm not, like, super science guy. Like, I could never be Walter White. Mm-hmm. But I feel like I could do what Saul Goodman does. Okay. You know what I mean? Like, so yeah. I, as a like, people person, and I talk to people for a living – like, I could see myself doing those schemes. Like, Josh and it's I... It's relatable. Yeah, like, Josh and I at the concert, which I was going to bring up uh, a little early, like, I told, like, one of the uh, security people that, like, this is my make-a-wish, like, oh my buddy, God. and, like, he just wants... <laughs> Wait just, a second. <laughs> that's what you fucking said? That, you didn't say that. I did, dude. I told each person a different story, so they were just pointing, and Josh is like, yeah... O R E. It worked out so perfect. O R E. And he and he was just like so happy, like he finished his drink, so he just has an empty cup, and it just looked so perfect. Bullshit! Like, I don't buy that. You did not say dude, that. I did though. Like that's how we got down. So the girl was just like, oh, "Okay, just go." And like that is but, not, what, dude. I think you might have had too many drinks. That's not what happened at dude, all. Dude, I fucking I had swear. to swear. I feel I talked people. to the girl. You walked by, and I talked to the girl to tell her. That Gosh. that my phone had died. See, that's, that's one of them because we we went to like different sides and then we felt oh. bad because we were like. So what did you have lawn tickets and you got all the way down? We there? had section twelve, good seats, but I was like, we were feeling good, and I was like, let's go, let's see how far down we can go. Like sometimes it's a fun game, you know. Yeah. It is a fun game, and we got all the way down. And then we're like, oh wait, we forgot the two people we were with, so we went <laughs> back to go get them, and then we had to like tell new people. And Josh is. I'll admit Josh's uh, phone thing was probably the, the, the smoothest way. Yeah, oh, my was, phone's dead. I can't show you the ticket. I can't show you the ticket. And, and we got access to every gate. Yeah. I mean, it was like at that point, I knew I have five guys who knew who I was and were like, when I walked by, they like rolled the red carpet and out. And then there like, was, oh, yeah, then there was like a chill fuck. dude. And like, he just, you could tell he just didn't care. He's just like, yeah, yeah. sure. Just whatever. Go. <laughs> yeah. So we just kept going there. But yeah, it was, yeah. Uh, it was fun. And yeah. So bottom line. Better Call Saul. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I, I kind of dropped off with Better Call Saul. I just didn't find it. Uh, well, now you can binge through them all. Well, what? So, uh, is it pick up? Is it finally get into some action or some like high intensity? Yeah, yeah. I mean, the last season. I feel like the great. last season was all about this. Like, it's just about the law- lawyer well, I don't know. And family and shit. It's not, oh no no. Well, that that's pa- this pa- this season. Not you, you're up. getting to the point where it's, it's like, drug dealers and shit. Yeah. Okay. Like now he is Saul Goodman. Okay, like good. he he's putting out the commercials and he's, oh, he's okay. no more slipping Jimmy. He's Saul Goodman. All right, so. I got. I, I actually watch, no, right? I've seen up until that, uh, but I think maybe not past it. I, it doesn't matter. I mean, I think because Breaking Bad is. I, it, I so don't know. It's, it's awesome. Breaking Bad is like one of my favorite shows. I think it's one of the greatest shows ever made. I think it might be on yeah, the top. Yeah, like, ended, it ended perfect. Sopranos. Yeah, dude. Oh, yeah, the That's ending what I'm watching right now. So satisfying. I just started. I'm on season two right now. Of Sopranos? Yeah. Not for the yeah. first time, though, right? For the first time. Oh, wait. I didn't know that, dude. I yeah. thought that was a rewatch. I didn't want to share it because I didn't want to get shit like Coochie does for watching stuff that's like 15 years no, old. That's, no, that's... I just watched that last year, so I'm good with that. That's totally yeah, fair. Yeah. yeah. No, I'm like, uh, I'm, a, and it's, it's my. We're actually like, my girlfriend and I are simultaneously rewatching Stranger Things season four, but okay. like, I'm just, I'm, I'm chipping away because I want to watch Sopranos every night. Oh yeah, it's and honestly, it, it was so sad because like once you get to the end, you're like, 
it's not like there's not gonna be any more. You know, like <laughs> yeah, they can't bring that. Sh- they can never revive that no. show. No. I mean, the best dessert is the dead, one so. that leaves you wanting more. Yeah, right. it's so yeah. good. I don't know why I held off for so long watching it. Maybe because I didn't have HBO. It's but. also a huge commitment, though. That's like those are long episodes. It's and an it's emotional all, show. They're it's like very heavy. They're like forty five minutes, but there's some I mean, of them there's creep over an hour though. Okay, yeah. yeah. I mean, I I time goes out the window when I'm watching. It's a very photos. very heavy show though. Yeah, there's I'm a toll by like season six because the first couple seasons are like, hey, I'm Tony Soprano, you know, like mafia, right. like they make you kind. It's kind of like Entourage where it starts off on high notes and then it like sort of deteriorates. Gets really dark, and then that's what happens. Is like yeah. it just goes. I'm that into route, that. I'm but, okay with that. I, I am about to piss Josh off about a movie I had watched uh, over the weekend. <laughs> uh, I finally watched Tom Cruise's The Edge of Tomorrow. Have you ever seen this movie? I have. Movie? Good flick. Good I flick. hate Tom Un- Cruise. Unfucking believable. That might be my best alien invasion movie Cruise? ever. I don't that's like good, Tom that's Cruise. a good movie. Edge of Tomorrow. Looks like a punchable oh guy. God. I'm trying to think. Oh, I will say there is one. There is one show that I've been watching that I don't even know if I've mentioned yet, which is kind of weird. I know maybe I did mention it with Cambio, but I've continued to watch it. It's the it's the Nathan Fielder um, the rehearsal the rehearsal. It's just been huh. insane. I dude. have two episodes left. So oh, I didn't oh, watch really? five or six. Yeah, I I kind of want Nathan to Fielder roll. is officially one of the funniest, but also fucking most psychotic men on earth. You have to watch the show Nathan Fielder. I'll put uh, that in the uh, HBO. Oh, I can't believe you haven't seen that. You would love Nathan okay. Fielder, okay. dude. It's I'll, wild. I'm wild. watching Industry as well. I think I have an episode to watch tonight. I have no idea what that is. <laughs> I don't know. That was a, it was a pre or right in the middle of COVID show. Um, and it's kind of like young professionals in London who work at this. It's called Pierpoint where they handle a bunch of money mm-hmm. for like billionaires and it's phenomenal damn i, I want to watch that what's it's that phenomenal on? it's it, it and it's it's got a, i always think the makings of a good show it's got to have like good story good characters got to have some sex in there yeah, yeah. or like you know drug alcohol something of that with yeah. money perfect it's what's the name of it and wh- what's industry it hbo okay i'm actually gonna i think i've heard of that actually first season's phenomenal gotta watch it gotta all watch right, it right. you're not a peaky blinders fan are you no, I have not seen Peaky Blind. I, everyone Neither tells I. me, and I'm just like, yeah, no, I'll get to it. It's, dude, it is haven't. like the most depressing show ever. I, I've been like, tr- I was like struggling last month to get through the final season, and it just gets to the point where they're all just like on so much drugs and they just like mope <laughs> around. That's like the whole show. It's And that's exactly what, and that and like killing each other. It doesn't matter. I, I wouldn't highly rate the new season of P. It was good in the beginning, though. Okay. Yeah, I got I got some stuff I gotta watch. I'd rather watch Better Call Saul though right now because everybody is telling me it's fucking awesome. Wait, I I know we're about to end this. Can I please give go, one go, more? Go, 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 go. What we do in the shadows on Hulu. It is one of the most successful mockumentaries ever. It's actually one of like five successful mockumentaries. It takes place about vampires in New Jersey, and they're in a house. It is one of the funniest shows. So entertaining, dark comedy. I think, and it just like absolutely slaps. So if you have Hulu, I the, do have Hulu. The yeah. new season two is absolutely. Fun. You probably have like six seasons to watch, but they're not. It's like ten <laughs> episodes, like thirty something minutes an episode. So it's like you can get you can through, crush it. through it. Yeah, fucking hilarious. What dude. we do in the shadows? What we do in the shadows? I'm that show is like almost probably like a nine two for me. I love that ah, show. Okay. All it's right. just funny, it's entertaining, and the visuals are very stimulating as well. I gotta be in a funny mood to watch a funny show. But know? it's dark. So it's kind of like. You know, it helps with that, Phil. What's that, Will? <laughs> <laughs> I think it goes without saying. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't actually know. Smoking pot. <laughs> Smoking pot. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have any more brain cells, so okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so what we do in the shadows. We're going to segue into our final segment, a little bit of, uh, we're going to do our little stand-up thing here, but I don't think, we might be a little slow on this one just because we've had a pretty busy couple of weeks, so uh, it's been a little tough preparing stuff. I'm going to come in with a story again, so it's probably going to get booed off oh the boy. stage. Oh, boy. <laughs> but, uh, Can't be any worse than Shanks, and he's not even here. <laughs> <laughs> I'll actually get us, I'll get us cooking here. Um, so I mentioned uh, at the wedding that my grandmother is crazy. She means well, but sometimes she can be crazy. Uh, She's single? Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Um, So she had one of the worst, she did one of the worst things I think she's ever done in my life uh, at the wedding. We're at a church wedding. It's silent as just the orchestra is playing as the bridesmaids and groom and everyone is coming up the aisle. She is sitting on the end of a row so she can take pictures. She's right behind me. First bridesmaid was... 
little heavy set, just a little bit, right? And all I hear her say, because she tried to say under her breath, she just goes, oh, my God, she's enormous. (laughs) (laughs) And everybody heard it. And she didn't realize, and, like, she just said it and, like, just kept going. And I was like, I'm, I'm not kidding you, my soul left my body. I was like, oh. <laughs> oh my I, did the bridesmaid hear her? I'm not sure. She had to have. She would have shrugged it off either way. And she, not. Had, she had to Jesus have. Jesus Christ, I grandma. couldn't believe she said it. And then my grandma just put me in several predicaments. She uh, At my graduation, we had one rule for the crowd was uh, you're not allowed to cheer in, in between people. <laughs> yeah. And she, uh, when I got announced... Uh, she stood up and screamed, way to go, Michael. <laughs> I mean, Andrew, in front of the whole crowd. And I have yeah, it on video. I actually heard and I'll that put, story. That's pretty funny. I'll put the video in here. Way to go, Michael. I mean, Andrew. <laughs> but she, uh, she's a character. I just imagine your grandma at the wedding, like, with her iPad, like, taking photos like this, <laughs> just out in the middle of the aisle. No, she was, uh, she actually held up the whole line on the way back because she was trying to take pictures of my brother because he was in the wedding party, and he, she was, like, couldn't get her phone going. The whole line was just was backed up of all the groomsmen and bridesmen. And I was like, Grandma, Grandma, I got the picture. Don't worry about it. I just keep going. <laughs> so she is an absolute character, and, uh, she just made of comedy, and then I got to Grandma. sit with her at the. Uh, I got to sit with her at the wedding, and she was just firing on all cylinders. She yeah. was. Uh, she lets it fly. Definitely something you need to almost see to like get it to like believe. She, yeah, like she's just off the rails. <laughs> but she, but off she the rails, love over Vermont. Okay. <laughs> love over Vermont. But I will say she is a, one of our biggest fans. She, I think she has shown the baked potato sandwich video to about a million people. Good. She, every single base. person, every every single person that she sees in public, she pulls up the video and she shows it. To Make sure she hits baby. that subscribe button on the YouTube yes. channel too. <laughs> That's too much. I can't get into that with her. Like I, she won't understand that part. So you right. know Andrew's name. All right. Who's who's going next? I got a quick. I got a quick ditty. Well, it's not a ditty. It's actually a story. Okay. Um, so this this story actually predates Bagel in the Lake Maury days. So this was before my Lake Maury time. But <clears throat> back in the day, my dad it used to actually take all his brothers there. And my dad's got four brothers. So if you can imagine like five Davis boys all equally wild at Lake Maury, you would understand that their time there only lasted a few years. But <laughs> moving on. Uh, so the story goes that my Uncle Peter was having a rough day out on the course, um, like a really bad round. He's not a great golfer, but like... He can put it together and shoot like 90s or 100, whatever. So they get to the 17th. Uh, it's a par three, and it's, there's, you have to hit over water. There's water right below you, but it's all carry to get to the green. So Peter tees up, and you know he, he chunks his ball into the water. I mean, we saw it coming. Um, almost immediately, he walks over to the cart, removes his bag, and full out javelins his bag off the 17th tee into the water below. Oh, my God. <laughs> He storms off the tee, he's shouting, he's, he's screaming, he's swearing, um, you know, and he sits down in the car with my dad, and they eventually drive away. And when they drive away, the car path goes past the water that he just threw his bag into. So um, as my dad and him pass the pond below, uh, Peter asks my dad to, to stop the cart. So he stops the cart, Peter gets out, he wades into the water, and re- he retrieves his bag and, and what's left of it. I think he was missing a few clubs, my dad said. Um, so my dad just figured, you know, he just, he's just trying to salvage it. He wants to probably finish 17 and 18. So instead, my uncle reaches into the side pocket. He pulls out his keys and his wallet, and he throws the bag back <laughs> into the water. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my <laughs> God, dude. <laughs> this guy's a fucking maniac, dude. <laughs> just shout out, Uncle Gweet, Uncle Peter. Love you. It's a great story. Aww. I wish I was there to see it. So he did not finish 17 and 18. Uh, I'm going to go uh, on a limb and say no. <laughs> yeah, that's a safe bet. Oh, that's Damn. good. That was good. That was a good one. Phil, got anything? Uh, yeah. Did you uh, Did you guys hear about the uh, claustrophobic uh, astronaut? No, I did not. He just needed his space. Oh, I was gonna <laughs> fucking guess that one. <laughs> that's all I got. Just a little. Quick did you one. come up with that yourself? I heard it a long time yeah, ago. Yeah, somewhere, right? Yeah, I'm like, I mean, <laughs> I'm not gonna be. What do you think? I'm gonna really get my joke book out and be like, all right, let's put this word. I don't know, man. You know, this is this is a very public stage. You know, this is. <laughs> Last night I accidentally ate my. Cat's food. <laughs> <laughs> Don't ask me out. That's the that's the joke. Uh, okay. All right. 
<laughs> that's oh that that you learned that from somewhere, but that was still funny. Yeah, no, I, I think if you had just I have cats at home, so it's believable. If you had just said the first part, actually, that would have been it for me. The first yeah, part. <laughs> yeah, that that's actually crazy. Like your delivery on that first part was one hundred percent. Like well, we, you just paused after. Like we planned that. Like I kind of set him up. Well, he so yeah, he set me up with his one liner. So I had one in the archives back yeah. there. But that was like literally you just said I ate my cat food my <laughs> my cat's food last night and then just didn't say anything after and that was fucking hilarious. Yeah, was, was funny, <laughs> your pause was electric. Your yeah. setup was your punchline, dude. I mean, mine's mine's pretty loose. I just I, I more have a I just kind of have like one of those situations where you like you know like in my house when I hear noises at night I, I, it's just like when I went down with Micah, whatever, and I yeah. found him in a pile of shit. <laughs> what? <laughs> You'd have to listen to the other okay, story. Right, no, but yeah, yeah. Basically, Tiki shit in the in the whatever, and my walk. My brother called me. I you know, and I went down, and he was in a pile of shit. <laughs> you know, I just like have these moments now where just like weird things just happen at night. I feel like, and it's not even that they're weird, but they're just like they're just like weirder because you, you kind of expect everybody to be sleeping. Um, but like the other night I, you know, I'm like trying to go to sleep and I hear this fucking loud noise and, um, and I'm like, I obviously I'm protective at that hour. Like if it's yeah. like two in the morning, right. I'm like, I gotta be protective. So i grab my mace or my, my pepper spray. I like to start with pepper spray and kind of analyze the situation. You know what I mean? Like, I don't, I'm not going to be the guy who, like, goes for his gat and then, like, you know what I mean? Shit Press patch right button, switch the mic. Yeah. <laughs> Shoots Micah, stepping yeah. in dog yeah. shit. <laughs> Stuck in doobie. Yeah, yeah, exactly, Will. Like, I don't want to be wielding that unless I, like, know there's an imminent threat. But the point is, I'm, you know, so I'm walking down. I'm kind of walking out of my room. I'm being very quiet and... I keep hearing this noise and it's sketchy. <laughs> it's like, and like a la- like a very scary noise that you don't want to hear at four in the morning or three in the morning. Never. And I fu- so I'm like walking downstairs and I just kind of like room to room. I'm not really turning on lights because I element of surprise. Right, I've right. got to be ready to go. You know what I mean? Like I don't want them to know that I'm coming. And I walk into the kitchen and it's dark still, but I hear the noise now very clearly. So I'm like I like move a little further in. And then I get to the thing, I get to like, I get to a doorway, like the doorway that leads to the the mud room. And I walk through and I look to my left and there's my fucking dad making a smoothie at four <laughs> points in the front there. <laughs> He's fucking awesome. standing there that with awesome. strawberries and bananas in his hand. <laughs> fucking hammering a smoothie at four in the morning. I'm like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Does he sleep. usually make his smoothies in the mud room or was he just like? No, it was. It's the pantry, which I know I, it was hard to explain the dining. Like the yeah. mud room's connected to the pantry. The mud room is like right on the outside of the pantry. So I'm walking through. I look to the left. And it, the best is like the look you know what I mean yeah. he's like like wh- what, what about you it? it you know what I mean like what about it you yeah. got mace in one hand a gun in the other <laughs> yeah I got like mace in my hand ready to go and it's this fucking guy making a smoothie <laughs> <That's great. laughs> cracking ice at four in the morning <laughs> like protein powder like you know what I mean like <laughs> oh he's a crazy man oh, that, is, that was fucking funny that didn't was happen funny God, just go with it. Like, was, You've totally made that story. Oh, you, oh, you should have just rolled with it. No, I dude, I, that's that's the art, man. I led you down the way. I used, I'm actually learning, by the way, because I just came up with that like a few minutes ago. There's an actual arc to that fucking story and why you guys laughed. I'm not even kidding. That was crazy. I just had you guys in my hand like that. That was that yeah, was actually you like. You lied to me. Well, you know how I got Friend, softer? Friends don't lie. Yeah. Like sus- it's a uh, build suspense. It's I built suspense, but I led you down the path of burglary, and then I hit it with guy making smoothie, which is don't belong in the same thing. And that's you did you expected burglary, and I gave you a surprise, which is one of the forms of comedy. I hey. actually expected more dog shit. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'll give you a There's three point eight. You know, it's a three point eight. This whole room was in a row, dude. I, I, was, I was I was I was like, no, that was funny, but I wasn't like. <laughs> That's crazy, dude, because you guys all went. That ah, was a I actually have noise. it on film. You want to go back and look yeah, at it? We'll check it out after. Rewind we'll see the if tape. that's a 3.8, Mr. <laughs> Mr. One Line Joke from the Internet. <laughs> <laughs> what did he say? What, what was his joke? I don't know. I don't know. Pigs in a blanket or something yeah, like no, that? No, no, no. Yeah. It was, it was, uh, it had notes of Nikki Shanks written all <laughs> it over it. It did have notes. Oh, Nikki Shanks. It's that Nikki, chair. It's that chair. That chair is cursed. cursed. That's the, a cursed chair. 
of Don't comedy. Don't give me the curse, Jay. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta, I mean, you got to come back with a better joke than that, dude. Uh, You're on the main uh, stage. All right, all right. For the third show, you know. Like, I okay. Yeah, all right. we are definitely going to be saying mo- see more of Phil the Thrill. He's an absolute pleasure to have on the podcast. Thank you so much for tuning into this week's episode of T Box Talk. This has been episode nineteen. Follow us along on all social medias. Uh, rate, review, subscribe, all all the good stuff. Uh, give some feedback to the podcast. Some uh, segment ideas would be great. You know, as we enter more of an off season for golf, so we need to fill that void with some stuff. Uh, Thank you so much for tuning in, uh, and have a wonderful weekend.